Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today we are going to be taking a look at the Kadas Vim 2. So let's get started. For the past couple of weeks, I had a lot of fun with this board. Like, no joke, it's actually very fun to play with. The reason behind that is because it's actually got a huge community behind it. You could go to their forums, and not only the developers will answer you, and a lot of people who are familiar with this board will answer basically anything you need. And that's a huge start for a lot of these uh, boards that are coming out. Now, let me tell you about the specs a little bit. This guy runs MLogic S912 chip, which is an octa-core with the big little thing in there, meaning four cores is 1.5 gigahertz and four cores is one gigahertz. And then you, on my version, which is the Max, runs three gigs of RAM and 64 gigabyte internal storage. Now, the other versions that they have, which is called the Basic and the Pro. Now, the Basic has two gigs of RAM with 16 gigabytes of internal storage, while the Max has three gigs of RAM with 32 gigabytes of storage. And the Pro version is actually something I would recommend because it's actually within everybody's price range. Now, talking about the price, it's very hard to say how much it is because GearBest is always constantly running deals on it. Like right now, you could find that the Pro version is cheaper than the basic version. So it ranges between, I think, $60 all the way up to $109 for the Max version. And with the running deals that they keep going on, you could find it a lot cheaper. And I'll leave all the links in the description below on where you could get it and the deals that's going on with the coupon codes and everything. Now back to the board. It has two USB 2.0 ports, a USB-C, but if you use on-the-go cable, it's still gonna be USB 2.0, and then HDMI. On the other side of that, you have a little SD card slot that you can plug in. On top, you have the 40-pin GPIO. Now, this 40-pin GPIO is completely different from Raspberry Pi. It's a completely different layout, so if you're gonna do project with the GPIO, make sure you follow their pinout. Now, it comes shipped with Android Nugget, which is 7.0, and it works really well with it. Not only that, it includes root access and Google Play Store. That means you could install everything right off the bat without having to try to figure out how to get the Google services on there and stuff like that. Um, I was able to play anything that I wanted to, basically Netflix, YouTube TV, Cody works perfectly fine on there. I haven't had a problem with any of it and it's fast. And because there's a backing behind there's there's also support for Ubuntu and they created an image for dual booting. So when you boot into Android, you can actually hit the power button and then reboot into Ubuntu if you want and if you need to. Now this guy for the past couple weeks been sitting on top of my desk because I've been using it constantly. If I needed to watch something on multimedia, I would switch it over to Android. But if I needed to do some compiling or uh, heavy lifting with this guy, I would switch it over to the Linux and then just do whatever I need to do. As of right now, if you can see it behind me, it's actually mining coins. Um, right now I'm using a CPU only coin, which is the XMR, um, the Monero coin, if you're familiar with it. I know they have GPU miners for it, but the GPU is not as efficient as a CPU. So anyway, I'm not, I don't want to get into that, but yes, it's actually mining coins right now. In comparison, on a Raspberry Pi, if I'm mining the same coin, it does about 10 hashes per second. This guy does 18 and the Tinkerboard does 13. So that's the comparison, I guess you could kind of try to figure out. Now I've done the same mining on my GDP win. Remember that little laptop review that I did? That is an Intel Atom and it only does about 13 hashes per second. Now even at full load, uh, I'm only drawing about one amp of power on five volts, which is very impressive. It comes in a really cool case, but I would definitely remove the top and put a heatsink on there. This thing gets really hot. They do make heatsink and a fan purposely made for this guy, and it actually has a pinout just for this fan. I would highly recommend getting them if you're gonna do some crazy stuff with it. Here are some quick numbers. At idle, uh, with the heatsink, I'm usually sitting around 50. Once I do some compiling and stuff like that, it runs around 75. Thermal throttling starts to happen around 80. Uh, when I'm mining coins, forget about it, it's always gonna hit 80. But when I have a fan on it, everything just drops down by like 20 degrees. So when I have a fan on it and mining, it's only about like 65 degrees Celsius. So fan, heatsink. If not just heatsink, it fits the Raspberry Pi heatsink perfectly fine. Uh, they do have other options that you could put in if you're familiar with DVB where you could actually stick in like cable TV or satellite They actually have an adapter for that. They have a remote that they uh, sell just particular for this guy because it has an infrared port in front Just if you're planning to you know use this as an open source Android TV box uh, Check out the community which I'll leave a link in the description below because they actually have other images like Armbian, Android TV and uh, Ubuntu and other uh, images that you could actually download from the forums and and load it into this guy. I recommend buying it because for 50 or 60 bucks, 
This guy does double or almost triple the amount of work my Raspberry Pi can. And I think I forgot to mention, it does have a gigabit ethernet. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys want me to check out other boards and do some other projects with this guy, ask it below. If you want me to test some hash rates and stuff like that, I could do that. If you haven't done so already, join my Facebook group. I usually have a lot of conversations over there. I'll leave a link in the description for that. If you are new to this channel, consider subscribing and hit that little bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.